We welcome you to Mountaineer Field at Milan Pushkar Stadium here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and Quint Kesnick with you as West Virginia starts a new era of football with head coach Dana Holgerson. Geno Smith on their first possession, able to connect to Bowie. Andre Bowie, first year as a running back for the Mountaineers. And there is Coach Holgerson, who was the offensive guru at Oklahoma State a year ago where they led the nation in total offense, Rod. Yeah, he's a talented guy. He has this job because West Virginia has not scored points in the last three years since Rich Rodriguez left. Bowie in motion out of the backfield for Geno Smith, and he gets it swinging out of the backfield, but he is upended immediately that time. Good defensive play by Daryl Roberts. Great play. We've got a freshman running back sizing up the blocking on the outside, but a tremendous play. Didn't get a chance to see what he was dealing with out there as Daryl Roberts came in and made a fantastic tackle. So the first third and long of the season for Geno Smith in this new Holgerson offense a third and eight they only bring three and he's able to get it complete and he came down out of Nealon covered by Monterius Lovett Perfectly legal in college football to knock a guy out of bounds to keep him from coming down inbounds. So the start of the Dana Holgerson era, Rod, a three and out. Yeah, not great. They're used to seeing that here in West Virginia over the last three years. I mean, they complain an awful lot about the fact that after Rich Rod left, scoring went way down. Andre Booker back for Marshall. Corey Smith, the new punter for West Virginia. Handles kickoffs. He's never punted in a college game before. They come after him, and he gets off a really good boot that drives Booker all the way back to the 13. And Booker has a lane. Andre Booker down the sideline looking to pick up a block. He does. Look at this. Marshall strikes first. Seven-yard punt return for Andre Booker. You know, Tess, normally it's great, great blocking on a return. But when your return man can make three guys miss with his quickness and speed right off the bat instead of just one guy, that's a special return. Tyler Warner. On for the extra point. A year ago, it was his missed 40-yard attempt in overtime that finished off a thriller between these two. Remember, Marshall has never defeated West Virginia. A year ago, they blew a 15-point lead in the fourth quarter, but Booker starts them off the right way here. Marshall gets out in front, 7-zip, thanks to the special teams of Andre Booker, who stuns Dana <laughs> Holgerson. Whoa. The new coach who came here with all the hype. He was the coach in waiting under Bill Stewart, and then a off season, and saw Stewart out the door, Holgerson elevated, but Andre Booker has put Doc Holliday's squad up a touchdown. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that soap opera in a little bit. What a soap opera it was. It, it went on for a while. A little crazy. Stedman Bailey and the very dangerous Tavon Austin back deep as Justin Haig now kicks for the thundering herd. And here is Austin from the end zone searching for space and unable to get out to the 20. How did Booker pull this off, Rod? Well, he did a lot of it by himself, but then he got some help. Now, you're supposed to make the first guy miss. Watch what he does. He makes four guys miss. Right there, you see, now he gets a great block on the outside there. That gets cleaned up. He's out to the corner. Now it's all she wrote. He's got his guys coming back to help. Since he cleared four guys, 
he had a lot of guys to help him as a convoy down the sideline. A year ago, Dana Holgerson's Oklahoma State offense led the nation in total offense, 537 yards a game. They were three and out the first time they were on the field today was West Virginia. Inside handoff and a good gainer for Andre Bowie. So Geno Smith, the quarterback for West Virginia from Miami himself. we got a couple Miami guys playing here in West Virginia in this rivalry. He had that comeback against Marshall a year ago led the team on a 96 and 98 yard drive in the fourth quarter to tie the game they went on to win it Dana says he has gotten better he's a smart kid very talented taking a shot here on second and one and gets it complete to Stedman Bailey to the first down out to the 43 yeah he got it introduced to Vinnie Curry he stood in there and took this shot. Vinny Curry is one of the great pass rushers in college football. Hello there, Gino. Vinny Curry had 12 sacks a year ago. He is an elite edge rusher. And there was movement up front. Looked like big 98, Delvin Johnson for Marshall fired off you know Tess we talk about Gino and Gino Smith is really talented if he has a fault as Dana Hogerson told us you know he may try to do too much instead of taking that five yard gain and just laying it out there or dropping it off to the back he'll try and squeeze it in down the field to get the big play and he wants him to back off from doing that he said he does it because he's capable of trying to of pulling it off. So a first and five after the penalty. Play action now. Final time. And complete downfield to Bailey. Bailey inside the 25-yard line before Daryl Roberts corralled him. But well, one of the things about this offense is the amount of space that it gives its skill position players, wide receivers, a lot of room to work because they spread you out and they force the defense to decide that they have to play man-to-man -man coverage if they're going to have enough guys to stop the run. It's Garrison in motion, and here is Garrison. And he utilizes a block inside the 20, pulled down at the 16. That's the freshman from Texas, Dustin Garrison. Here is a look at that new West Virginia offense. Rod. And they've got some talented guys. Tavon Austin jumps out at you. Stedman Bailey is also a guy who's really had a great camp and talented. We'll see a lot of balls thrown his way, but it is an outstanding group of receivers. They work very well in open space. Bowie remains the running back here out of the gun on second and two. That's Austin in motion. They go misdirection with Bowie, and he fights just past the line of scrimmage. He was cut down by Roberts again. You know, Tess, we looked at those backs and receivers, and we're probably going to see two or maybe three freshman running backs for West Virginia. Yep, Bowie, Garrison, as well as Bernard Roberts. Talented group, all very similar in both size and style of running. Now a third and one for Geno Smith. That is batted down. Marquise Aiken went up and just rejected that Smith offering. And a flag comes in. Oh. That'll drive Doc Holliday absolutely crazy. It was on Rashad Jackson, and he's getting an earful. Yeah. Jackson, by the way, is the son of former NFL star Ricky Jackson. Well, he's a veteran corner, and he's he's been a starter for a couple years. And a little, little worked up, a little excited. Took a shot he probably shouldn't have. Here's Bowie, blockers in front, and just fights for about a yard and a half as Devin Arrington came up from that strong safety position. Let's take a look at the big guys up front, and you will see the center, Joe Madsen, who is 
the best on their offensive line, Rob. Yeah, he really is. He's a really good player inside. They have Pat Eager on the right side tackle, who was really a guy who came on in camp and won a job in a battle with Clinton Spain, so it's his first start. Second and goal for Smith and company. Bowie. Nowhere to go. Very good job by that front seven of Marshall of just filling holes and big 350 pound Brandon Bullock can fill a lot. Well, you know, I, I think we were a little bit concerned about the Marshall defense. We didn't know how they would handle inside rushing. Yet they were very, very good that time. You had Bullock coming in there doing a nice job. The inside guys don't get as much attention as Vinnie Curry on the outside. So third and goal, four receivers, three by one, three to the far side for Geno Smith. Delayed handoff. Bowie, nowhere to go. What a great, great job inside by Trevor Black. Dana Holgerson's offense denied. Well, Black now has to get off a block. Look at this whim technique he uses to get beyond the lineman who's trying to block him there. That was Jeff Braun who missed him as Black just used that swim technique to get by him and make a tackle. Tyler Bittenfort, his third year as the Mountaineers kicker. This from 27. Marshall's defense denied Dana the end zone. They're up 7-3. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Mandatory in this state to have a little gold and blue in your closet unless you're from the Huntington area where they prefer that shade of green and boy do they prefer a scoreboard that reads that way seven to three Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore with you we'll hear from Quint Kesnick in a moment so coach Stu was here Bill Stewart mm -hmm. had a coach in waiting Dana Holgerson named in December but coach in waiting doesn't always work out that way Rod. you know it, it doesn't tend to work when you're not the head coach naming your successor and that's what happened here Oliver Luck the athletic director brought in Dana Holgerson to help with the offense and wanted him to wait a year Stewart thought he could stick around and be the guy and we said at the time if there's one guy in college football that could handle this it would be Bill Stewart and that wasn't the case it didn't work out well at all no and the offense all the hype surrounding it a three and out to start the day today and then they get down to a goal to go situation and the Marshall defense steps up against that man Geno Smith and the Mountaineers so they settle for a field goal Marshall struck first with an 87 yard punt return by Andre Booker John Martinez a little trouble picking up that ball and he is taken down just across the 20 yard line by J.D. Woods, a reserve receiver. Well, we talked about it not working out so well. This is what happened in June of last year. Hogerson was hired as a coach in waiting. Hogerson in May was escorted out of a West Virginia casino. Allegations about him being uh, intoxicated, those were allegations. And then later there were reports that Stewart was asked, asking a writer to dig up some dirt on Hogerson to try and get him out. Shortly thereafter, Stewart resigned, and Hogerson was named as the head coach. This is Van, Trayvon Van, and just about a yard for the freshman from San Diego is George Wright and Julian Miller combined to bring him down. You know, Tess, when all of that was going on with Hogerson and Stewart, Oliver Luck, the athletic director, was about to get on a plane and go on a family vacation to Europe. That changed. Of course, Oliver Luck, uh, famous because of his family. He was a stellar player himself, but now he's known as potential Heisman dad, the father of Andrew Luck at Stanford. This complete to Aaron Dobson. So Rakeem Cato, the true freshman from Miami, Florida, out there starting today for Marshall told you earlier he was the star quarterback in high school as a state champ in Florida at the highest level the 6A schools very athletic a real gamer 
of a kid. Ran a similar offense in high school. Ran the spread system. Zone read. Athletic, mobile. Not the strongest arm, but certainly accurate. Here's Van, and he is taken down immediately. Tyler Anderson was the first to get there. You know, Tess, one of the things we learned about Cato, the coaches were impressed with his mental toughness, and, and they think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, he overcame some things. He lost his parents by the age of 12 and was raised by his sister. And uh, Coach Holiday talked to us about the fact that he feels that the adversity that he overcame really prepared him well to play this position. And quite a task in front of him today, playing the 24th ranked Mountaineers in front of a sellout crowd on the road here in Morgantown. There's Van again, and once again gobbled up by that front four of West Virginia. Bruce Urban was in on the play first. Well, it wasn't the uh, offense was the problem last year. Defense was mighty fine, Ryan. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they've done a great job. They kept the entire defensive staff because they've done so well. And this is what the freshman quarterback is facing. This defense and a guy like Bruce Urban, who had, what, 14 sacks last season? 14 sacks for Bruce Urban, a top NFL prospect. Third and 12. Cato. Connects Wilson trying to shake free, but he was brought down well short of the line to make by Keith Tandy. Well, you understand why they want to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands very quickly. Freshman, tough situation, facing a couple of Really good pass rushers. We don't want him to get rattled early. Indeed. Austin back to field this punt. Case Whitehead has had four blocked in his career. Flag comes down at the line of scrimmage. Austin from the 14. Picks up a big block as he gets across to the 33-yard line. Let's see what the penalty is. Tron Martinez, the starting running back for Marshall, playing special teams, got laid out. Legal formation, five men on the backfield on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty be assessed on the end of the return. It was a bruising game a year ago. It was a thriller. In-state rivalry, they bring it. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by DirecTV. This season, NFL Sunday Ticket is included at no extra charge when you switch. Call 1-800-DIRECTV and the U.S. Postal Service. That's a Mountaineer man trip here in Morgantown where they touch that big lump of coal. This is the Friends of the Coal Bowl trophy that they play for tonight. Marshall and number 24, West Virginia. Fresh set of downs for the Mountaineers. Andre Bowie. Let's check in with Quint Kesnick. Quint. We apologize for the audio issues down on the sideline with Quint. Try to get back to him. In a moment, five yard gain by Bowie on first down. As this Dana Holgerson much hyped offense looks to get in gear. Smith, plenty of time, and he just overthrew the outstretched arm of Ivan McCartney. Yeah, you know, Tess, the way this offense is designed to work. They want you to think about defending the pass, and they spread you out to do that, and then they want to run. And when you come in to try and play the run, if you set your defense to stop the run, that's when they really want to throw and try and get the big plays and go down the field. Hey, you look at some of those teams in recent years, as much of the passing stats were awesome. Look at a running back like Kendall Hunter at Oklahoma State. Yep, exactly. Third and five now for Smith. Pressure came right up the middle. He escapes it. Going to try to do it on his own, and he does. Out to midfield. 
And that was nifty pocket presence by Geno Smith. I mean, the blitz was coming. They brought a blitz and twisted a defensive lineman inside, and they had it. I mean, they had him circle. Yet he just danced a little bit to the left, took a step to the right, and got out of it. First down toss for Smith. And that time it is complete to Bailey. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta is presented by Pennzoil. Coverage is going to begin on ESPN tonight at 6.30 Eastern. Great sports weekend, huh? Chock full of college football. Capped with a little NASCAR. And then we got Miami and Maryland tomorrow night. Last Sunday before the pro stuff starts. So you get to see Dana Holgerson's offense against this fired up Marshall team. Second and four, and look at the time for Geno Smith. And Bailey, once again, his fourth reception already here today. Oh, and you know, Geno Smith fought against his own natural instincts. He wants to go deep so badly here. <laughs> he is thing. looking to, he's staring that down. He wanted it. And he finally came off of it because he had enough time. A little bit of maturity there. Yep. Remember, he was number one in the Big East passing efficiency ledger last year. No pressure off the edge. They run right to it as Andre Bowie finds the sledding a little difficult. Rashad Jackson came up from that corner spot to cut him down. End of the first quarter. Marshall took advantage of the special team's 87-yard punt return. Has them on top, 7-3 against Coach Holgerson. This is the network. The annual battle for a proud state, a place with pictures painted like John Denver's lyrics. Those country roads take us to a passion-filled rivalry. Quint Kesnick's down on the sidelines. Guys, after that last failed drive by West Virginia, Dana Holgerson really animated with his running backs and wide receivers, came over to the bench and said, guys, we have six plays of zero yards. You've got to start blocking. Well, on this drive, you've seen a bunch of different formations. They've shown that loaded backfield. Coach Holgerson told me it simplifies the defense when we load things up. And you've seen some nice decision making by Geno Smith. Coach's biggest concern was that the quarterback would try to kind of force things instead of just relying on his system. Oh, Tess. Formations can give you matchups, and we've seen the last couple times they force some single coverages. So Quint may be right. They may take a shot if they get what they had last time. A couple cornerbacks out on an island right now. And he goes over the middle. Brown. Devon Brown. Yeah, you know, they, they a transfer from Wake Forest who came over here, Rod. Yeah, and he fits into that mode of the Jock Sanders, Noel Devine, two guys who graduated and left this program, and he's a similar kind of receiver. Small, quick, can change direction. Hurry up to the line. Fresh set of downs for Geno Smith. With the set up the screen, and he does so. And the blocking in front for Andre Bowie. So it'll be first and goal for the Mountaineers. Part of the offense that has changed over the last few years for Dana Holgerson, and that is the screen pass to the running back. Everybody sees it to the wide receivers these days. He's bringing back the old school of get the lineman out, dump it off to the running back, and let him run. Got a Marshall defensive player banged up that is Kellen Harris their starting weak side linebacker and this is a Marshall defense that absolutely needs to be at full strength against Hoverson's crew well keep in mind that uh, with weather like this early season you'd like to run people in keep your guys fresh get in, get your backup some reps to keep your starters pretty fresh and that's hard to do when you start losing guys <laughs> Bowie is the featured back in this full diamond backfield formation for first and goal. Here is, he is met at the line of scrimmage and met well. A 
Dante Black, Trevor Black has really been doing a nice job. You'll see him slip a block. He'll show up in here right there. Gets a little bit of help. That's the actually, that's not Brown who actually got in there. It's TJ Ross who got in there. Brown showed up later to help out. Play action now. Touchdown, Mountaineers. Ivan McCartney. Smith's first of the year. And they have found their groove. You know, having all those guys in the backfield just creates that one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. And, you know, you, you got to play tough coverage and get up in a guy's face. You can't just allow a guy like Bailey to have freedom to come off the line of scrimmage. Geno Smith, 23 a year ago. First of this year as he finds Ivan McCartney for a four-yard touchdown pass. Welcome back to Morgantown. Took this Mountaineers offense until the second quarter to get a lead on the Thundering Herd. Well, Tess, let's actually take a look at that, that score. That formation forces single coverage out here, and Roberts doesn't get anything on Bailey. He doesn't touch him. Too much room out there. You got to get your hands on that receiver when you know you have no help inside. But that formation, three backs in the backfield, tells you right off the bat you got single coverage. You don't have help. You got to get your hands on the receiver. McCartney got right inside right away. No competition at all. Got the double lead blockers and everything flowing to that near yeah. side. All the defensive players stepping up. And then a slippery guy like Ivan McCartney, who's also a big target at six foot three, is able to get loose. But you know what? You got to step up as a corner. You, you can't backpedal when you're out there by yourself and you got no help. Booker and Martinez back to receive Corey Smith's kick. Here is Booker. And he is tripped up. Let's check in with Ryan Burr in the studio. Ryan. All right, Tess, time now for our Taco Bell update. Let's get you caught up to date here on Prairie View and Bethune-Cookman. Jamal Robinson, what a day for him. Three touchdowns. Bethune-Cookman wins 63-14. to That's your Taco Bell update. Tess and Rod. Thanks, Ryan. A lot of big scores in college football this weekend. I tell you, and some guys had phenomenal games. Indeed. Started off on Friday night with Robert Griffin III <laughs> and his five touchdowns. Yeah. Rakeem Cato is hoping that he can light up the scoreboard a bit here. Freshman able to connect with Dobson, who's trying to cross in reverse field. Picked up one block, but then is taken down for a loss by Keith Tandy. Odd decision by Dobson. It goes for a loss of eight. How about bad? Not just odd, bad. This is designed to be a quick screen. He's supposed to come running inside. Everything's taken away. Well, peeling back 15 yards and trying to get to the other side isn't going to work out too well, especially when Tandy stays home over there. Now they're down at receiver. As Troy Evans is no longer a part of this program. We'll tell you what happened there. Well, you, you've got a, a freshman quarterback in a tough spot now. You can't do an awful lot here. Now they go conservative that time. And a gain of just about three, but Tron or Troy Evans was expected to be a major contributor, no longer with the team, arrested on armed robbery charges. And the allegations are that he had a loaded weapon with him and accosted several people in a single day. Scary stuff. So guys like Dobson and Wilson trying to fill that void. Third and 14. Cato. Martinez can't get anywhere. Najee Eaten good. up by Bruce Irvin and Najee Good. That's a really good play. Now, Doc Holliday knows that his freshman quarterback cannot be put in spots like that. Well, and that's exactly what you're thinking defensively. You're thinking they're backed up. They're not going to take a chance. They don't want him to throw a pick or something down here and have us get momentum. They're going to be safe. So they were looking for the screen, looking for the short pass, and looking for the run. So 
not a surprise that West Virginia was able to stuff that. Punt team to the field. Case Whitehead gets himself in position as the clock's down to one. And they were forced to burn a timeout. Prior to the snap, first charge timeout of the half, Marshall. So we will take a break. And West Virginia offense will have the ball when we return. Up three. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by the new 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. Well, this was Friday night. Coach Dana Holgerson receiving the Miners' safety lamp from basketball coach Bob Huggins. Also saw Randy Moss in the mix there. That was their fish fry they have for the Remember the Miners organization. Of course, such a big part of the culture of this state. Dana making his coaching debut. Mountaineers up a field goal here. Yeah, big expectations for Hogerson and explosive offensive plays. Not a lot of that so far. Grinding it out primarily. Whitehead on to punt. Tavon Austin settled at his 30. And he calls for the fair catch at the 38. So Coach Holgerson through the years has produced a lot of talent at the quarterback position. Yeah, he's been sort of a quarterback whisperer. <laughs> like the will. horse whisperer? He's <laughs> exactly. the quarterback whisperer? Yeah, I mean, look at what he's done. I mean, he had some great quarterbacks. He's developed guys that you hadn't heard of before. Graham Harrell at Texas Tech. Great career there. Great season back in 2007. Case Keenum is for a quarterback in college football in 08 and 09. And then what a tremendous job he did last year at Oklahoma State with Brandon Whedon, third in the FBS with over 4,000 passing yards. By the way, Whedon had 388 and three touchdowns yesterday, and Keenum had 310 and two. Coached up pretty well, huh? Dustin Garrison now flea flicker. And they chase down Smith. He gets rid of the ball. But that front four of Marshall never gave up on it. Delvin Johnson had pressure, as did Omar Brown. Well, you just had the feeling that the way they'd been grinding it out, that they were a little frustrated and they were going to come with something soon here. They tried to go with the trick play, trick oration, but the pass rush, again, we talk about Curry an awful lot, but he's not the only one up front that brings some pressure. Garrison remains in the backfield. He's the freshman from Perlin, Texas. Looking to set up the screen to him, but it's well covered. And now Smith delays and then gets it to him, and a flag came down. Looked like there may have been a few linemen straying downfield. You know, Billy Mitchell had that play smelled out. And that was a downfield. Number 74 at the offense. Five and down. Holiday weekend of college football wraps up tomorrow on ESPN and ACC battle. Miami and Maryland, the new coaches, Al Golden and Randy Edsel. That's tomorrow at 8 Eastern. That game's also available in spectacular 3D on ESPN 3D. Does Miami have enough players? Well, I've been prepping that game. I'm going to broadcast it tomorrow night on ESPN 3D. And you look through that depth chart, and they are patchworking that defense, Eight, Rod. nine guys. Eight guys uh, suspended, yep, and then okay. another one not related to the NCAA investigation. So nine in total, including Ja'Cory Harris, the quarterback. Second 15 delayed handoff to Bowie, and he's only able to get about a yard and a half. Well, that Miami situation certainly has caught everyone's attention, not just about, about Monday's game. As you look at the storylines for that game, Golden making his debut, Danny O'Brien, outstanding rookie year last season. Grossly but, underrated quarterback. Oh, tremendously. The sophomore so. Danny O'Brien, he was the ACC Rookie of the Year. Third and 13, pressure on Smith. Now he escapes, finds some time. He's going to keep it. Can he get there? Yes! Geno Smith dives ahead for the first down. Vinnie Curry was on the chase of Geno Smith, but the fleet feet got it done. Well, that's a race that Smith is going to win every time. And Curry had been knocked down and then came after him, but couldn't get there. Smith doesn't like to run that much, but he's not afraid to take off when he has to. 
substitution infraction. 12 men on the field. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, after that mad scramble of 15 yards on a third and 13, they run right back up to the line. Marshall and Doc Holliday, they try to substitute, and they got caught. Yeah, pace will always have an impact unless you stop teams. I mean, Oregon loves to use pace. LSU did a great job of shutting down Oregon so that they couldn't get into their pace game. Well, I want to ask you more about your impressions on LSU. Whoa. Thoroughly impressive last night, weren't they? Play action. Pressure. Ball is loose. And West Virginia recovers. But George Carpenter came storming in and loosened up that ball. They did a great job of disguising the blitz. Geno Smith had no idea they were planning to come. They showed zone coverage, and the linebackers waited to the last minute to come flying in, and the blockers could not pick him up. They didn't account for him. 16-yard loss. And just able to get it back. The 40-yard line is Bowie. Delvin Johnson on the tackle. Marshall doing a very good job defensively mixing up what they do. Sometimes they're playing some man coverage. Sometimes they're doing a combination of man and zone coverage. Sometimes just zone coverage. They're trying to make Geno Smith guess what they're doing. And he's been wrong a couple times. They didn't see what they were doing. Line to make is the other 40. Third and 20 for Smith. Out to Austin in space. Tavon Austin, could he? He comes up just short. A late penalty comes in. Let's see where they mark it. Maybe a generous spot, and we will check on the penalty. But what a surge by Tavon Austin. I think there was a block in the back. It could have been called a hole, but it looked like they had Tyler Urban, who was moved from tight end to an inside receiver. Look a block in the back. Number 81 of the offense. 10-yard penalty, third down. They got J.D. Woods on it. And he was downfield trying to make something happen for Austin. And there you see Tyler Urban gets the outsider on there, but he's clean. There's the block at the very end by J.D. Woods. Didn't need to. There was nothing going on there in the play. Just got a little too close. So they will mark it back at midfield as Austin go forward to try to pick up that first down but the penalty will bring it back and make for a third and ten now much more manageable for Smith and now West Virginia is going to talk things over Dane is going to figure something out for third and ten when we return Joe Tessitore, Rod Gilmore, and Quint Kesnick back here in Morgantown. Home team facing a third and ten at midfield. Geno Smith trying to extend the play, and he does for a first down to Brad Starks. goes 6-3 was matched up with the 5-9 Rashad Jackson rod yeah they only brought three dropped eight and Geno Smith got outside and then they were, he was able to just wait for Starks to come over what you'll find now is Marshall will have to bring more they can't get there and they can't play coverage it's just eight they got beat with it Andre Bowie on first down Bowie has not found much running room against that Marshall front four Tyson Gale and Vinnie Curry got in on the tackle that time there's Geno's day uh, he's been, been spreading the ball around Rod. He's been patient. I mean, he, he, we've seen him fight against that tendency to try and take the big shot. He's held on to the ball, gotten out of the pocket, and dropped it down to the short receiver. Remember a year ago, he needed to be a miracle worker to make the comeback against this Marshall team. They bring Austin around, and Marshall just waited on him. Rashad Jackson was still in the backfield along with Trevor Black. How much of this do you think is that I got to please the crowd? A, a lot bit. of it. Yeah. I mean, they went three years complaining about, oh, the, the little screens, the fact the ball wasn't thrown down the field, no trick plays. And this is your debut? Well, we've seen two trick plays in the first quarter. Coach Rip, defensive coordinator, 
Chris Rippon. Double for losses for Marshall. Third and 16. Smith. First down again. Willie Milhouse. Geno Smith just stays on his feet until something opens up. He's extending the play. Hey, they had the right defense call. And they had him bottled up. You can only cover so long, but watch him buy time and buy more time until he can give it to Milhouse down the field. But well, that's just Geno Smith extending the play. So first down for West Virginia to the 16. Bowie. Barely back to the original line of scrimmage. Rashad Myers, you know, freshman Tess, himself with the tackle. They've played good defense. The only thing that's really killed them so far has been Geno Smith buying time. Oh, yeah, Bowie, their featured running back, is just 14 yards on 12 carries. And now he's replaced by Dustin Garrison here on second and 10. Smith again. He was looking for the screen. Now he does find Garrison and just spinning for about a yard and a half as Tyson Gale came in there. Well, Garrison tried to get free in the middle, and Vinnie Curry just almost tackled him before he got out on the route. You know, Garrison, another one of these guys, Rod, who led his team to a state title. He was down in Texas playing 5A ball and was under-recruited. Comes up here to West Virginia, finds himself getting playing time right away. Line to make is the six-yard line. Or you can just do that. Stedman Bailey, touchdown Mountaineers. Puts West Virginia up 10. Geno's doing it on his own with a little help from Stedman Bailey. 15-yard touchdown pass for the Mountaineers. Stedman Bailey was a high school teammate of quarterback Geno Smith. And they're good college friends, too. Getting along well in West Virginia. <laughs> yes, they are. They got along well in this. Now, watch the safety in here. Omar Brown, just to your right. You'll see him. He's over here. He'll come into the screen. Being read perfectly by Geno Smith. He knows he's not in coverage. He knows he's got single coverage outside. Over there against Lovett with Bailey. And Bailey just ate up Lovett. Lovett gave up the inside right off the bat. You know, Tess, we've seen some pretty bad cornerback play this weekend, starting Indeed. on Friday night. But we also saw some great cornerback play out of LSU, which is why we think they're going to be a really, really great defensive team and a national championship contender. The whole defensive backfield at LSU, Claiborne and Matthew. Matthew was a freshman oh. last year. I mean, Peterson got all the attention yeah. last year, and you didn't realize how good the rest of that LSU defensive backfield was. They are tremendous. They locked up some quick guys last night. Booker on the return. Time to check in with Ryan Burr. Ryan, what do you got? All right, Joe, this Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover. Busy day for the Chicago Bears as they add to their secondary, agreeing to a one year deal with two time Pro Bowl safety Randy Merriweather a day after he was released by the Patriots. The Bears cut running back Chester Taylor, who gets picked up by the Cardinals to back up Jeannie Wells. Guys, back to you in Morgantown. Thanks, Ryan. There is Bruce Irvin. 14 sacks a year ago. The target now is the true freshman, Rakeem Cato. Play action for Cato. Takes a shot downfield, and that is incomplete. Quinn. And we're joined by Oliver Luck, the guy who wears a lot of hats in college football, athletic director here at West Virginia, proud father of Andrew Luck, Stanford quarterback. He just got off a red eye. Uh, how do you best describe Andrew's performance last night? 
Well, I thought the team played well out there. You know, it was a pretty easy victory in the end of the day, 57 to three over San Jose State, but they looked sharp. Uh, defense played very well. Andrew did enough to kind of get some points on the board in the first half, but uh, they've got some tests coming up, but this was a fairly easy one. No coach in waiting concept. In hindsight, what would you have done differently? Well, at the time, I thought it made sense, a succession plan. I'm not, I'm not planning to ever do it again because I think Dana Holgerson's a heck of a coach and I want to keep him as long as I can. But at the time, I did think it, it made some sense just to turn a succession plan where guys can get prepared to become a head coach. Since the start of camp and now uh, our fir the first game here, what stood out? What's impressed you most about Coach Holgerson? He's a very organized guy. I mean, he's a, an Iowa guy at heart, very organized, very Midwestern, very disciplined. And what's impressed me is just how well he's taken to the head coaching role, and the players have responded, as we're seeing today. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Joe. Oliver Luck, the athletic director here at West Virginia, as he has seen his defense really go on the attack against the young Marshall Thundering Herd. He made the decision to bring in Dana Holgerson, and now at a third and 23, this is a spot where Rakeem Cato does not want to see himself in often today. Van just out to the 12-yard line. So well, here is where it gets really difficult for Marshall. And now you're kicking this ball away to Tavon Austin, who's a great return guy. And you have to you have to play good special teams here and hope that your defense can hold to hold together here and get a stop. Otherwise, you're looking at going down 24-7 if you don't stop West Virginia here. Ace Whitehead, remember we told you earlier, four times he's had punts blocked. Oh, they hit a player, hit a West Virginia player, and what a smart play by Austin to get after the ball. Here's Ryan Burr in the studio. All right, Joe, coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report, we'll talk to Robert Smith, find out who he thought was the most impressive player from Saturday. We'll also get you a preview of the big Monday night ACC tilt, Miami and Maryland, and look at the top five plays from Saturday, all coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report. Guys, we'll see you then. Very interested to hear who Ryan and Robert talk about in terms of the most impressive player on Saturday. I could offer up a few because we were watching Robert Woods at USC oh, with a 17 catch game yeah. for 177 yards against Minnesota. Half of Matt Barkley's tosses for the day. And how about uh, Ray Graham at Pitt? Yeah, at 201 rushing yards against Buffalo. Three touchdowns also for Graham. He's going to be. Asked to do a lot in the Big East this year for Pitt. Bowie, just a game of a couple. Oklahoma State's offense last year under Dana Holderson was phenomenal. Well, West Virginia's, that's why he's here. Well, and, and that's what we've been talking about. That's why he's a head coach now, because he knows how to score points. Second and eight, here's Austin, gets the block, turns on the speed, and is down at the 41-yard line as Rashad Jackson came in and tripped him up. Brown had the block downfield as the other receiver. He's not only a guy who knows how to score points as a head coach, he's, he's developing guys. Bowie picks up the first down, his best run of the night as the freshman is down to the 30-yard line. That's one of the guys he's developing. He's got three fresh. They will be better midseason, better than they are tonight. They hurry up to the line. Once again, they work Bowie. This time, a gain of about three. So Jacksonville, Florida, very quick. One of the best backs that West Virginia signed. Of course, Noel Devine had such a good strong career here and they're going to ask a lot of Bowie to fill that void second and seven Garrison comes in Smith to pass now what happened he had completed 11 of his <laughs> yeah. last 12 <laughs> that and was, that one sailed oh, you know he had what he wanted I mean they're trying to get single coverage on the outside he got it but that thing 
was thrown, what, eight, ten feet over the head of his receiver? He's wide open. Ontarius Lovett will uh, gladly take that all day long. Stedman Bailey had scored the last touchdown. Now a third and seven for West Virginia. A lot of room out there to the left side. Smith. Stayed on his feet and was able to complete it just past the line of scrimmage to Brown. You know, on the one hand, that's good stuff. On the other hand, it's the kind of thing that can get you in trouble down the line. And Geno Smith sitting there wrapped up and trying to throw the ball over the middle. Got away with it this time. But that could be a problem later. Tyler Bittencourt, who hit the game-winning field goal in overtime against Marshall last year. Not quite that kind of pressure here in the first half with a 10-point lead now. This from 43. And Bittencourt puts it through. Two for two today for Tyler Bittencourt. 13-point lead for the home team. West Virginia enjoying a 20-7 first-half lead here in Coach Dana Holgerson's debut with the Mountaineers. Let's take a look forward for West Virginia, brought to you by Sprint, and we look forward into the month of September. There's the schedule. Hey, Maryland's not going to be easy, but come September 24th, oh, it's on. Yeah, think about that. You'll have an LSU team coming here with likely West Virginia being 2-0. Geno Smith playing with a lot of confidence. And that LSU team, Jarrett Lee, let me tell you this, his numbers might not have been great, but in blitz situations, he had poise. He was six of nine and kept the ball moving, kept the team moving. I think they'll be fine with him at quarterback. Now, I, I marveled at the way people were doubting Jarrett Lee. This is a guy that's proven he can win in the SEC. Well, you know, he doesn't throw it like Jordan Jefferson and certainly doesn't run like he does, but he's a more accurate passer and really solid, really solid with that team. So Lee looking for success in the SEC. Meanwhile, here's the guy in the Big East that everybody is pointing to, Geno Smith. Some have him listed as a dark horse, as a Heisman candidate, expecting him to put up some really big numbers in Dana Hogerson's offense, and also expecting West Virginia to be more than a nine-win team like they've been the last couple of years. There's a chance that they could win the Big East if things go well. But keep in mind, South Florida. That was impressive yesterday, going on the road and winning at Notre Dame. And as we showed you that schedule for West Virginia, you should know December 1st at South Florida. Could that be a de facto Big East title game? Marshall now back to offense. And Jermaine Kelson out past the 25-yard line. Rakeem Cato, the freshman quarterback. Well to be careful. I mean, he's a freshman. He's playing in front of 60,000. This defense knows that they don't want to take a lot of chances with him. They're not, they're not giving him a lot of room. Here's Dobson, and he scoots out just short of that first down. This week on baseball's biggest stage, AL Central rivals battle. White Sox, Tigers on ESPN2 Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell as part of the hunt for October tonight at 8 Eastern. They need to pick up this first down. Good pass, and they do with Kelson. Rakeem Cato, the true freshman quarterback from Miami. They have a lot of confidence in him, but this is asking a lot here on the road to start his career against your in-state rival. And the problem he's facing is that this defense is attacking the ball. They're settling in. You can't get them loose unless you throw it deep, and Marshall doesn't want to throw it deep yet. John Martinez in the backfield with Cato. Good pass protection that time by Martinez. And a nice touch on that pass to Ontavius Wilson. That was Cato extending the play and Wilson making the adjustment and going deep. This was a short route and then Wilson had down the field. He was covered at first but made the adjustment to find some open space down the field and Cato read it perfectly. Nice adjustment. 26 yard reception to Ontavius Wilson. And now Marshall is threatening here at the 38. Cato has time and unable to connect with Tommy Schuler. That defense is not 
giving him the deep ball. And they're daring him to take the shot down. They're really trying to hone in on the short passes and put pressure on him. Boy, Marshall could really use something here. Yeah. You see the second quarter, what well, yeah. they've been unable to get anything going. Remember, it was a punt return touchdown early that got them on the board. The offense hasn't moved the ball until now. Here's Martinez, and he has a big gainer. Tron Martinez down to the 15-yard line. So just over a minute to go, and the thundering herd knocking on the door. Plenty of time. That was a nice run. Martinez added 15 pounds in the offseason. But all of those throws to the outside had the linebackers and safeties leaning to the outside and open up the run game inside. Trayvon Van trying to fight for extra yardage. It's tackled by Casey Vance. So the 22-yard run by Martinez has set up Marshall here, and they're going to take a timeout. A half. It will be a And what a difference a year makes. A year ago, it was this Marshall squad who caught West Virginia sleeping a bit. They had a 15-point lead. They were down at home. They'd never stayed West Virginia. Yeah. Everything was going their way, and then all of a sudden, Geno Smith awoke. Yeah. Two drives over 90 yards, sent it to overtime where they won it. Well, and it's been Geno Smith in this ball game, offensively, anyway, for West Virginia. I mean, he's just extended play after play, making things happen. The Marshall defense has done the right thing, but when Geno Smith gets out of the pocket and makes something else happen, he stays alive, it puts a lot more pressure on the defense. Mountaineer man looking for a defensive stop here. Second and eight. Cato, quick pass, has it complete. Dobson spins inside the 10, and the clock continues down to a half minute here in the first half. Third down play, hurry but don't rush. You've got time, you have another timeout. Run the play that your freshman quarterback is comfortable with. Here is Van, nowhere to go. Yeah, I don't think he got it. Nowhere at all to go as that front four of West Virginia just Clock stacked up. You see Doc Holliday is going to use that last timeout, and he will send on his kicker, try to cut this deficit to 10. Dana Holgerson's hair looks a little different as the pressure of the first half went on there, doesn't Are it, you Ron? sure? I don't think it's a lot different <laughs> from the way it started. He's got a good look going on there. Defense. Did holes. We were just talking about what happened a year ago. It was a thriller. Geno Smith had to make magic. 12 seconds remaining. Marshall was leading 21 to 13. Came all the way back. It was a 15 point deficit. This was the two point conversion to send it to overtime. Tyler Bittencourt hit a 20 yard field goal to go up 24 21. And then it was Marshall's opportunity to keep things alive. Tyler Warner's attempt. He thought it was good. It just strayed. And now here he is today from 25 to close out the first half. And they are able to get something out of it. It started well for Doc Holliday and company. Then Geno Smith roared. 20 to 10 Mountaineers at the half. Now let's get to the studio and our Bud Light halftime report with Ryan Burr. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by Cars.com as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. 20 to 10, number 24, West Virginia up on their in-state rival. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. We will hear a report from Quint Kesnick in just a moment. All the talk coming in, Rod, was about Dana Holgerson's offense. Mm -hmm. Make that Geno Smith's offense as we take a look at the game track brought to you by Bud Light. Well, Hogerson's offense hasn't been running smoothly. It's been Geno Smith extending plays, making things happen. He's getting the ball off 
He's been under a lot of duress, and he buys time. He gets outside. He's been running to pick up key first downs, but he's also been able to buy some time and make good decisions down the field and good throws down the field. That's been the offense. Marshall's done a Nobody's decent job of handling the other aspects of the game. It's just that Geno Smith has been unstoppable so far. 17 of 22, 187 yards, couple of touchdowns. A year ago against Marshall, that offense laid dormant for three quarters, and then Smith was asked to make magic, and he did, responding with drives of 96 and 98 yards, plus a two-point conversion, and a 15-point comeback to send this game into overtime, the rivalry against Marshall. Today, a different story. Focus going out in front here in the first half, and now they'll look to add to it as they will receive to start the second half. Yeah, and the crowd seems uh, a little bit lethargic. Well, they started with a three and out. Did they start with a three <laughs> and out, or did they start with too much beer? <laughs> there is a change here at West yes, Virginia, Rock. change. They actually... On campus, in stadium, yep. beer sales. Yeah. Onside kick to start the second half. Ball is loose, and it looks like West Virginia was able to recover. A flag came down, but Marshall tried to pull it out of the bag to start this second half. Wes Tonkery, the special teamer, secured the ball for the Mountaineers. Justin Haig was the kicker for Marshall. Offside. Number 44 of the kicking team. Five-yard penalty be added at the end of the recovery. First down. Well, you roll the dice. Nothing wrong with that, but it's risky because if you miss it, as they did here, now you've set up West Virginia's offense with a relatively short field. Offsides wasn't going to work anyway. Recovered by West Virginia. How about that onside kick by Auburn yesterday? Material to their comeback. Smith able to get it complete. Just a pickup of two to McCartney. Here's Quinn. Guy spoke with Marshall coach Doc Holliday. His biggest concern from that first half, keeping Geno Smith in the pocket. He says at times it was a breakdown, the defensive ends in contain, or the lack of push up the middle. I asked him about his uh, quarterback, the freshman, Rakeem Cato. He says the youngster's doing a nice job. Biggest area that he needs to see improvement. Huge hit would be carrying out his fakes and reading the end in their zone read. Joe Lasting, temperature has dropped at least 10 degrees down on the field. We do have lightning now within about a 12 mile radius. If it, lightning gets within six miles, they're gonna shut this thing down and send the fans under for cover and the teams under for cover. So lightning right now within a, at about 12 miles away from this facility. Now Rashad Jackson just brought a little thunder against Andre Bowie and it makes for a third and 14. Bernard Roberts, the freshman running back, now comes in to replace Bowie after that big hit. Geno Smith escapes pressure and just flicks it forward. Boy, was that dangerous. Well, that's what we talked about at the beginning. Trying to make a play when it's now there. And Marcus Aiken was the guy who forced the play. Now, Geno Smith should just eat this one. But now he tries to make something happen, and it was almost picked off. So after the onside pick, that didn't go their way, and the good field position by West Virginia, the West Virginia offense unable to do anything with it. So Andre Booker, who had an 87-yard punt return to open up this game, back out onto the field as Corey Smith punts. They get after it. And Smith with a good boot that takes a bounce inside the 10, a favorable bounce for the Mountaineers. So a 10-point deficit for the Thundering Herd and their true freshman quarterback, Rakeem Cato. Try to see if he can gain on some of that momentum. And they had that field goal drive at the end of the first half. A closer look at Cato, the first true freshman to start a quarterback for Marshall since a guy that had a pretty good pro career. Yeah, Chad and, and Chad Pennington had a pretty good Marshall career. Did he ever. Threw some touchdown passes to Randy Moss while the two of them were at Marshall together. Of course, all the success in one double A and then transition. And now Cato 
with poor field position here. Tron Martinez trying to get to that edge, and he does so. This is a good run by Martinez as he tips toe down the sideline out to the 26. And a nice block from Demetrius Evans, a gain of 20. What great patience and vision. He's not in a hurry to make a cut. He takes his time, reads everything, very patient. And he just completely negates that fine punt by Corey Smith as they're now out to the 26-yard line. Here's Martinez again. And this time he is wrapped up by George Wright and Najee Good. Well, Tess, it'll be interesting to see how they handle Cato here. I mean, West Virginia has continued to take the approach of they're going to force him to throw the ball deep to beat them. And right now, they're showing a lot of underneath coverage, trying to take away the short passes, things that would be easy, and they're trying to force him to make the hard throw. 10 of 13 for the true freshman for 83 yards. There's his 11th completion. Just nice, easy, manageable stuff as he connects with Aaron Dobson. Yeah, and right away, that was a stop. I mean, short throw, defender right there. They're playing for those things, and, you know, you want to jump those. You want to attack them. You, there's all that incentive. A double move, a pump and go might actually pay off at some point here because they are really sitting on those short rocks. Watch out for number 11, Bruce Urban, in a third down spot like this. Third and six for Cato. Pressure, and it is batted down right in his face by Terrence Garvin. The leading tackler from a year ago who's got that good wingspan at six foot three for a strong safety, and it shows up here. He almost caught it. And here he comes on that blitz, little game there, and unblocked it off. Almost wow. caught that. He almost pulled that ball yeah. right down into his gut rod. Yeah. Very athletic. Case Whitehead. On to punt. Austin to return. Takes a bounce and he fields it at the 24. Austin. Paused for a moment there and glanced over. When these two get together, it is hard hitting. The in-state battle. They bring it a little bit. Like this. Hello. Welcome back. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore and Quint Kesnick. Two of the best defensive ends in college football playing in this game, Rod. Yeah, but somewhat negated by the fact that these quarterbacks have good feet and it's been a lot of quick passing. You look at Vinnie Curry over on the left side there. Outstanding pass rusher. Doesn't have one. Only a hurry today. And Bruce Irvin, 14 sacks last season. But uh, three-step quarterback passes running at him. He has no sacks today. There are the two. And right now it's Curry's turn to try to get after West Virginia's Geno Smith. And just an underneath wrap this time. As McCartney gets a nine-yard gain. He had a four-yard touchdown reception earlier. Now, Quint Kesnick told you about the weather situation here. Lightning has been reported within seven miles, so we're taking a look. The operations and safety people here are on top of it. You know what happened in South Bend and Ann Arbor yesterday. And now, a little tunnel screen to Tavon Austin for a first down. You know, the West Virginia fans don't get excited about the tunnel screens and the bubble screens. They saw they enough saw of, that, right? of that, Yeah, yeah. They're, they're waiting for some excitement from this offense. Bernard Robinson now. Bernard Roberts, excuse me, in the backfield. Wow. Deflected right towards a Marshall defensive back. Right off the pads of Tavon Austin. I mean, is it me, or do you, you get the sense that the fans are, are waiting? They're just I mean, The waiting. offense was so hyped up under Dana Holgerson yeah. and all the stats he's put together at Texas Tech and Houston and Oklahoma State. They figured it was instant. Yeah. You'd get that instant gratification, 
insert coach, give us big offense. Geno Smith tried to get the slant that time to Brown, but unable to connect, so it'll make for a third and ten. Yeah, a little restless. And the Marshall defense, yeah, they're doing a good job. I mean, one thing they've done is they've taken away Tavon Austin. I mean, Austin was supposed to be the focal point of this offense, much like Justin Blackman was with or, uh, Oklahoma State. Trying to convert a third and ten now is Smith. A lot of time. Looking for an option. Finally goes to the far side, and it'll depend on the spot of Devon Brown. He's going to be right at that stick. Wow, he got a big spot. Devin Arrington was covering Brown. And you feel that's a generous mark, Rod? Oh, I thought it was a little generous. I think Doc Holliday would agree. Of course, they give him the forward progress. Which is fine. As Arrington then drove him back. That was a big opportunity for the Marshall defense. According to our first down marker, looks like he just made it. That is unofficial, of course, that yellow line. We had a challenge on Friday night of one of these, and as they challenged it, he didn't I think he's get just it. short. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Even with that mark, he's what about four or five inches short. I think he's gonna go. Of go. <laughs> I think he's gonna go. Now, this is a little bit of peer pressure, you know. <laughs> the fans want it. They're a little restless. He's up by 10. Now, the, the danger here, you miss this, you give life and field position to Marshall. And I, I think they have so much control of the game. I'd go ahead and kick it, kick it downfield and just. There's that keep diamond the formation, that diamond backfield as Kovach and Clark are in with Roberts. Kovach in motion. Roberts. I think he got it. It'll depend on that last surge in the mark, but you see the linesman coming in from the side, and he looks like he's short. Yeah. This would be yeah, huge yeah. for Marshall. Well, we talked about it. That, that's the danger of doing this. George Carpenter, the linebacker, came oh, right in no. on that play. He didn't get it. He did not get it. They marked it. They took a step back. A turnover on downs. The Marshall defense has done their job against Coach Holberson in that diamond formation. Well, that's the danger. You were in control. That's why I would have kicked it. That's why we talked about it. You could keep the freshman quarterback in his own shadows of his goal line, but you take his chance. Roberts doesn't get it. Great surge by Aiken and Carpenter to make this play. And now you have some momentum. Doc Holliday's team now with good field position here. Down 10. The freshman quarterback working out of the gun. Trayvon Van wrapped up immediately that time. Look, Tess. What's up, baby? You gotta let the freshman play a little bit. I mean, you're at midfield. Back in the game. Give him a chance to make a play. He's athletic. He can get to the edge. He also has been safe with the football. He has. Let him throw it a little bit. He's had a high completion percentage. No interceptions. Here he swings it out and gets it to Ontavius Wilson. A reminder, our weekend of college football wraps up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with Al Golden and Randy Etzel making their coaching debuts at Miami and Maryland tomorrow at 8 Eastern. Game is also available on ESPN 3D. Of course, all the suspensions at Miami. We'll see how that plays out. A it's third and three now for Cato and company. Has time downfield wide open and completes it to Craig Wilkins for a first down. You know what he did? Cato made a very subtle look to the running back coming out of the backfield, and that drew up the defense, and he was able to throw behind. Now watch his slight look to the left. Right there, he looks a little bit to the left and comes right back and throws down to the deeper receiver. 
That's Wilkins that he gets out there. There's Van now. Chopin Van. I'll take a loss on this play as they all came surging in. Najee Good, the first to get there. Will Clark and Julian Miller met him. Take a closer look at the day for the freshman quarterback, Rakeem yeah. Cato. Yeah, everything's been short. You know, a couple of shots down the field, the right in the middle, not to the left side. Everything has primarily been within 15 yards. Doc Holliday said they do not want to ask him to do too much. He's done just enough. But they'd love to cash in here on this. Martinez on second and 12, and here he goes. A first down for the thundering herd all the way down to the 17-yard line. What a great block by the center, Chris Jaspers. A little double team there. You'll see that double team and then the block coming around by Bruin 64. Bruin 64 comes around and opens it up. The guards and center, great block. So a fresh set of downs. This youth movement for Marshall paying off with this offense. Martinez again, and once again, he finds room right up the middle for a gain of eight inside the 10. You know, keep in mind, Tess, we're talking about a relatively young offensive line, the center and the left guard, Scott. I mean, those are youngsters, redshirt freshmen and sophomores up there picking things up. A year ago, they played 12 true freshmen and 28 red shirts. And more youngsters in the mix here as Martinez was gobbled up that time. It was an awkward exchange with Cato tripping up, coming back. Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, he was retained on this staff. Of course, they had so much success a year ago. Number three in total defense. Doc Holliday, though, took this team to the limit a year ago. Almost pulled off the big upset. Now facing a third and three. Cato has time, has a man, and it will be first and goal as Dobson secured it. And that was a tough, tough throw. He got them playing zone coverage out there, so there was room to get it in there. And Dobson got inside. Never looked anywhere else, just a quick slant. And now they have a first set of downs, and they're running at this defense, which is better running away towards the sideline. This defense struggles when you run at them a bit. And for Schmidt, back out of the backfield, still on his feet. And Gator Hoskins unable to fight for extra yardage. It'll be a loss of one. Good play defensively by Pat Miller to come up and get after Hoskins. You know, Tess, this defense is built on speed. And this is designed to chase down running plays, to defend the pass. That's why they're running at this defense. I expect they'll continue to run at them. They may even try to run at Bruce Irvin. Let's we'll see if they do so with the freshman Trayvon Van. He's the lone back here. It'll make for a third and goal from the four. Tyler Anderson with a thudding collision against Van that time. Doc Holliday knows he has to take advantage of golden opportunities like this. They do not come often in this game against West Virginia. But you know what? You can't get too risky. You have three points in your back pocket where you keep the pressure on and you can make this a one possession game. So you want to be safe here because you can get three out of this. The fade. Incomplete. Dobson was covered by Pat Miller. Toss was a little high into the outside. Yeah, that's that's okay. They didn't turn it over or make a critical mistake. Pretty safe call right here. Now you get three. You keep the pressure on. One possession gain. You got something out of that. So a chip shot for Tyler Warner. And they cut it to a touchdown. 
Warner two for two. Doc Holliday likes what he sees. Rakeem Cato, the freshman quarterback, showed composure on that drive. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, in theaters September 16. There are no clean getaways. Here in Morgantown, where Marshall is cut in to the Mountaineers' lead, 20 to 13. Let's check in on that weather with Quinn. Yeah, guys, uh, lightning could be an issue right now. The latest lightning strike, 6.7 miles to our south, heading in a northeastern direction. Now, the cusp here, with the, they'll shut this down, is at six miles. Any lightning strike within six miles, the players will go inside for 30 minutes. The fans will be taken out of the stand. So we are right on the edge of the front. The temperature has dropped tremendously. It's kind of a little windy, expecting some hail and some weather. The question is when and w what type of weather gets here. Yeah, you see the urgent message on the scoreboard there Quinn bright red warning the crowd if you watched any of the highlights or any college football yesterday you know what happened up in Ann Arbor and in South Bend public safety player safety number one here's Austin Tavon Austin can he get to the outside cuts back Tavon Austin trying to turn it on could he yes Return for Tavon Austin. Second kickoff return for a touchdown in his career. Quinn was talking about a lightning strike. He just pulled one off on special teams. <laughs> yeah, he did. He set up his blocking perfectly. The dynamic Tavon Austin accelerating for the big score. Sunday NFL Countdown, Sunday mornings on ESPN. They're back on the field. That's the good news. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore here in Morgantown where you can hear the crowd reacting as they are getting ready to play. Now, Rod, very interesting negotiations yeah. between the athletic directors and Mike Hamrick, the athletic director at Marshall, was very honest in his assessment, saying, hey, we're getting the ball. It's a rivalry game. We're playing this thing. Oh, it's a rivalry. We talked about it. They're 20 minutes to go in the ball game. They're down two possessions. They're getting the ball. He could not agree to end this game. They wanted to play, and he says they'll play as long as they can. They're not conceding the game. There's a specific NCAA rule as to how to deal with these circumstances terminating the game with a determined final score is what happened at Michigan yesterday because of lightning tonight we play on and Andre Booker on the return let's show you the rule that they were wrestling with here athletic director Oliver Luck at West Virginia and Mike Hamrick at Marshall and Rod a couple of these things weren't an option at all well yeah the first one a later date the schedules didn't match up they couldn't do it terminate the game with the final score there's no way that Marshall was going to agree that their rival had already won the game with 20 minutes to go and nobody wanted to forfeit the game and nobody wanted to declare it a no contest that it never happened so the only option was you know wait it out or resume the game remember when we left off and there is Mike Hamrick the athletic director at Marshall West Virginia had just scored to make it 27 to 13 on a 100 yard kickoff return now taking a shot downfield and almost connecting with Antavius Wilson is Rakeem Cato, the freshman quarterback for Marshall. So West Virginia had the momentum. Now the long delay and Marshall back on offense. A three hour and three minute delay here in Morgantown due to lightning. And about six hours ago, we talked about the fact that Cato needed to throw the ball deep down the field on one of those double moves. They come out and they do it. They just missed it. Here's Mark 
Martinez. And Tron Martinez with a gain of about four as he was wrestled down by Will Clark and Terrence Garvin. And you wonder about the warm up, how loose guys are. Cato threw that first ball, loosened up his arm, okay, but can he squeeze one in, a short, tight throw, if he needs to after all that time? 36 now. Trying to make is the 37. Pressure is on. He steps up. And he goes down. And it was Bruce Irvin and Najee Good. Irvin, of course, 14 sacks a year ago. He was one of the big headliners coming into this season for West Virginia. He's a guy that is now playing every down. Last season, he was a passing situation, pass rushing specialist. Now he plays the run. And he goes after the quarterback. Well, three hours and six minutes ago, Tavon Austin had that 100-yard kickoff return. Now he's back to field this punt from Case Whitehead. It's a low line drive that backs him up to the 24. Austin looking for a block on the sideline. And he tiptoes his way out to the 43-yard line. A look back at how we have arrived at this point. It started with special teams being oh so special for Marshall. It was Booker on a punt return that got Marshall out 7-0, and the crowd was silenced, and the offense that they were expecting to get going had a tough time until Geno Smith actually started to extend plays and find receivers running free. Touchdown passes early, got McCartney, came back to Bailey. Now good field position after the long delay and the three and out. Smith, little tunnel screen, and Austin drops it. Smith, 207 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns. He connected with McCartney and Stedman Bailey. Up 27 to 13 a year ago in this rivalry game. He had a rally back after being down 15 points in the fourth quarter, a couple 90-plus yard drives to send it to overtime, where they eventually won. Marshall has never beaten West Virginia. Good looking pass that time for a first down to Brown. Stephon Brown. He had to squeeze that one in, and Brown almost caught it one-handed. Got inside, in between a couple of zone defenders, and Geno Smith just threaded the needle. Bernard Roberts, the back with Smith out of the gun. And he gets the call and he sprints ahead inside the 30. Roberts is a freshman who enrolled this past January. Dana Holgerson had an interesting comment when we asked him about Roberts. He said, this is a young man who plays a million miles an hour, a little out of control at times. Sometimes you got to get him under control, a little bit more discipline. Roberts is going to stay in with fellow freshman Dustin Garrison, number 29 here for second three. Gets the feed again, and it's going to go down as a loss of one as Marquise Aiken. You see, Tess, that offensive backfield. Hogerson has his offense at around the 30-yard line, scoring zone area. And now he should be expecting pressure from Marshall because Marshall knows they're in the scoring zone area, and they want to push him back. They want to get him out. They can't afford to give up another score. Third and four for Smith. Floats it out there and completes it to Ivan McCartney. First down, Mountaineers. Again, Geno Smith buying time, extending the play. Carpenter with providing the pressure. This is a long developing route from McCartney. Geno Smith bought time to get that throw out there. It's a pass again. And quickly out to McCartney, who's having a really nice day. Had the first touchdown catch of the game from Smith when West Virginia took the lead early in the second quarter. Five catches for 31 yards for McCartney. Roberts straight up the 
middle, and another first down for the Mountaineers. Well, we've seen all three of the freshman running backs this afternoon and tonight. You know, during the break, we talked about the area. I said, rather, they're not firing off that well. They're not drive blocking that well. They've come out here. They come right down the field, pushing back this Marshall defensive front. First and goal now. Roberts again. That time, nothing doing as Delvin Johnson just collapsed on Roberts. Omar Brown also came up. Yeah, Brown came off the corner while Johnson was inside. See how quickly Brown came off that corner on a safety blitz to turn that play inside. the five the six foot five 251 pound former tight end Rod how does he fit into this new offense here well they split him out they split him out and have him block and he's a big target easy to find and he just came slanting inside and for some reason the Marshall defenders were retreating when there's so little ground to be retreating when you're near the goal line and that'll do it for the third quarter a third quarter that included a three-hour delay. West Virginia is looking to add to their lead when we return. This was supposed to be all about Dana Holgerson's head coaching debut for West Virginia, but the weather has taken over all day long. A three-hour and three-minute delay it resumed just a couple minutes ago. We started with over 60,000 fans. Not all of them could endure that three-hour delay. And those who have stuck around in those gold T-shirts will be mighty happy if they can handle this third and goal here. They go back to that diamond formation. Gives you single coverage on the outside. Coming up just short. Wow, what an effort by Roberts. A late flag in that pileup. He put his shoulder pad level down and powered for about two or three yards after he was hit. 5'9", 180 pounds. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, a number 98 of the defense. The penalty's half the distance to the goal line. It results in an automatic first down. You think Doc Holliday's going to be having a conversation with Dalton Johnson? Wow. He had a stop there. They had a third and goal stop. And now... Fresh set of downs. Oh, man. That is as bad as it gets. First and goal just a couple of inches away from that goal line because of the personal foul after they stopped them cold. And they will take a look as replay official Bob Welsh will see if it was a touchdown. Okay, it's the ball that we're looking for. Look at, look at that leg drive. What great leg drive. Hard to tell from that angle. Remember, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. The call on the field was short of the goal line. And here's the problem. You can't take that word indisputable lightly because when the bodies are laying, even though you can make the assumption that the ball crossed the goal line there, you have bodies acting as a barrier to the sight line down that goal line so the, to completely confirm whether or not the ball was in or not. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. I think you can make the assumption. You cannot assume. But you can't you assume. You have to make sure that you see the ball actually go over the line. And at that point, it's blocked by arms and legs and defensive linemen. Well, yeah, every official that I've talked to says that it has to be absolutely clear to you that you don't have to waver about it if you're going to overturn That's right. the call. And because of the fact it wasn't, the play stands. It'll be first and goal. But 
If there was no penalty rod, this would have been fourth and goal. Yep. Diamond formation again. And Roberts again. And this time, he gets in. The freshman, Bernard Roberts, with the first touchdown of his college career. Makes it a three touchdown margin. Well, they waited a long time. But when they came back out, that West Virginia offense came right down the field. A little power running to cap it.